Kristen here at UT Southwestern Medical Center, and thank you for tuning in to our first of three chats we're going to be hosting this month as part of American Stroke Month. Today we are here with Dr. Babu Welch, who is a neurosurgeon here at UT Southwestern. He serves as the medical director of our neurosurgery ambulatory clinic and co-director of the Paul M. Bass Center for Neurosurgical Innovation. So before we get started, I wanted to um, remind everybody to like and share our conversation. We'll remind you throughout the, the time we have, but also be sure you ask your questions in the comments section on Facebook. We will take as many as we have time for during our chat. So let's get started. First of all, Dr. Welch, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be here and chat sure. with us. No problem. And um, as a neurosurgeon, you know, you have a very, um, you have a different view than a lot of physicians. I'm wondering if you could tell us kind of what is stroke? So what's happening in your brain when somebody has a stroke? So the best way the best way that, that describes stroke is blood doesn't get where it needs to in the brain. Okay. Right. So it either didn't get there because it was blocked. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was it's what we call a dry stroke or an ischemic stroke. Mm -hmm. And then or it gets out because the conduit or the blood vessel pops. Okay. Okay. And that's a, what we call a wet stroke or a hemorrhagic stroke. Okay. And uh, so there's a big textbook on stroke, and there's a whole bunch of little chapters that cause those problems. Right. And, and that can run from aneurysms or blood vessel malformations to what's very much in the media and news these days in terms of our ability to now remove the clots mm -hmm. to prevent the long-term effects of these ischemic strokes. Okay. And so that the hemorrhagic, the ischemic, but it's very important that we don't lose sight of the multiple causes of stroke that just aren't blood clot strokes. Okay. And what, what are some of those other causes of stroke? So an blood vessel aneurysms or weaknesses in the blood vessel that can mm -hmm. pop. There's small balloons that develop over time. Mm -hmm. um, there are carotid disease or heart disease, atrial fibrillation or heartbeat okay. irregularities can cause blood clots to go up and block blood vessels in the brain. So mm -hmm. those are causes of strokes, but arteriovenous malformations mm -hmm. okay, are another way to have a stroke, a fistula or a miscommunication of the arteries and the veins of the brain. Okay. Okay. That, those are, that's something that's more traumatic, Okay. but you can have a trauma five years ago and then have the results now oh, wow. officially. So there's, stroke is really a big, as a cerebrovascular nurse, that's what I focus on. Mm -hmm. um, and the. I can keep busy because there's a whole bunch of different ways to have strokes. So who is who's at risk for having a stroke or some other cerebrovascular condition? It really depends on the, the diagnosis of the disease. Okay. Right. So if you are a pretty, and I, it's probably fair to say that heavy smoking puts you at risk for all of them. Okay. So right. smoking puts you at risk for aneurysm disease. Smoking puts you at risk for blood vessel disease is where the blood vessels start to narrow. Mm -hmm. um, so smoking is probably one of the major factors that unifies a lot of the cerebral vascular diseases right. because smoking affects what creates bad vessel health. Okay. Okay. But then that can be also associated with high blood pressure that's not controlled, mm -hmm. diabetes that's not controlled, cholesterol disease, be it hereditary, so that just runs in your family, right. or having bad diet. Okay. Yeah, no they're exercise. not all hereditary yeah. and genetic. Yeah, it's, okay. So, um, but the, many of the things that we know we should do that we don't, mm -hmm. when we don't, put you at risk for stroke. Okay. So your exercise, your diet, your seeing a doc every once in a while. Right. Right. So that puts you at risk for strokes. Okay. So with that in mind, um, once somebody has a, a stroke, there, what treatment options are available? And it seems like I hear a lot about minimally invasive sure, yeah. and, options. Sure, yeah. So once you have a stroke, you have to decide what type, mm -hmm. where, right. when, okay? Right. Um, and again, what's very popular nowadays is to discuss the acute ischemic stroke. Mm -hmm. And that's the stroke that, that occurs, and we go through our, our algorithm of be fast, where you evaluate your balance, you evaluate the eyes, you evaluate the mm -hmm. face, arm, speech, mm -hmm. time, so be fat. That is the one that's happening right then and there, and this, as soon as you identify those symptoms in that be fast algorithm that suggests a stroke is occurring, mm -hmm. you go to the emergency room, okay? 
it doesn't make a difference at that point what emergency room you go to, but you okay. need to get, or at least call 911. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's very interesting nowadays is when you call 911, then where do you go? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's where the, there's, because stroke, because our ability to take care of strokes has improved so much mm -hmm. over the past 30 years, mm -hmm. there are now tiers of stroke systems. Right. right? There's a stroke system of care, mm -hmm. right? and then there are levels within that. Okay. Right. And that can go from something called a critical access hospital. Mm -hmm. right? If that's where you can go, you get there, and you can at least probably get a CAT scan and some blood work. Mm -hmm. okay? If there's a very, very high likelihood that you have a major stroke and a large blood vessel is affected, and we would call that a large vessel occlusion or elbow, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. then there's a lot of discussion right now. Where do you, can you, do you bypass all these other places to get to a center right. that can treat you? Right. Or do you take your first shot? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, from my standpoint, mm -hmm. when you have an acute ischemic stroke and you're in that one little group of pa small group of patients, mm -hmm. you it's based on time. Okay. If you're very good about knowing this is when it started and you're under a couple hours, mm -hmm. then you probably need to get to the closest center that can give you a clot busting drug. Okay. And that's called TPA. Okay. And that's not available everywhere. That's not available at every center, but a primary stroke center okay. Okay, typically has that available. Okay. okay. Now you don't have to be, okay, mm -hmm. but you're pretty certain that if you are a primary stroke center, you're going to have that available. Okay. okay. That brings up a good point. So we here at UT Southwestern are an advanced comprehensive stroke center. Right. So what does that mean for patients? So what, what that means, if you go from primary stroke center that can give the TPA mm -hmm. to a comprehensive stroke center or an advanced comprehensive stroke center, then that says that we have the ability 24-7, 365 days a year, to get you to the hospital, get you to treat it with TBA, and if the large vessel is occluded, so mm -hmm. that elbow, then we can actually go and take that clot out within the appropriate yeah. period of time. Okay. okay. And what differentiates the advanced comprehensives from the others is 24-7, 365, two rooms running at the same time. So we're, we are, We've probably got the largest clinical group, okay, of fellowship trained, completed mm -hmm. training physicians that can work together from neurosurgery, neurology, and uh, wow. radiology. That's so. something you've said before that um, that the team approach to stroke care is incredibly important. That's right. And why, why does that make a difference? Everybody thinks a little different. Yeah. Right. And so, as a neurosurgeon, I may be trained to work in crisis mode a little longer. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, as a radiologist, my ability to b look at imaging and understand how imaging can help me—that's mm -hmm. where my base was. Right. Okay. If I'm a neurologist, right, my neurologist, neurologists are, are masters at diagnosing diseases of the neurologic system. So, if it's not a stroke. Mm -hmm but others think it might be, that very well-trained neurologist can pick that up, okay? okay. Now where we, a lot of us, especially here, kind of intersect is in the interventional suite where we can, mm -hmm. there is a neurologist, two radiologists, and two neurosurgeons here who work together to make sure that that 24-7, 365 is gotcha. there. Gotcha. So, so yeah. what, we have a question came in, and um, this person, she's wondering, she said her friend recently had a stroke, she couldn't talk or walk, but she's making great progress thanks to therapy. She can talk now. Does she have a good chance to make a full recovery and return to her job as an editor? Is that, so that, that, that depends that's, on the patient. That depends on the patient, and that's the beauty and the pain of stroke. Okay, mm -hmm. the, the, In certain locations, mm -hmm. produce certain symptoms. That's okay. right, that diagnosis we were talking right, about. Right, at the very beginning. Right, so we can understand a lot of the recovery from a stroke depends on how early it was detected, mm -hmm. okay, the amount of brain tissue that did not get good blood flow, okay, and frankly, how quickly you recovered early. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if, if someone has a stroke on day one, but they're pretty close to normal on day 14, mm -hmm. they got a pretty good chance at recovery okay. over time. Okay. If you had a stroke day one and we're at day 361 and we're still trying to yeah. figure out how much better I'm going to get, I have to tell you that the graph is not going to be doing this, mm -hmm. right? There will be slow, mm -hmm. but you never want to take someone's motivation away, right. okay? 
And the most important thing is to realize you continue to push forward. And it's there's a reason that healthcare as an industry has grown up. A lot of that's therapy, right? Right. Yeah. And so one of the things now this is goes a different direction. Obviously, there's therapy once you're in post kind of post surgery or health, what sort of treatments, but. You know, what treatment options are available for people who've had possibly maybe an isch ischemic stroke? So, How would you, or a hemorrhagic, however. Time. Time. That's, that's the big differentiator. Okay. okay. Within the first 68 hours, mm -hmm. okay, depending on how that person is and where they've gotten to, okay. there's a good chance that we can now, up to, you know, 89% of the time, maybe a little bit more than that, depending on the person, we can get mm -hmm. the clot out. But the sooner that we get to it, the better the patient's going to do. Okay. Probably 50% or so of the patients that we can get out, mm -hmm. right, can improve to functional editor. Okay. Okay. Um, but really, it depends on that timing. Beyond that six to eight hours, and we're, real, we're really still understanding that's the published guideline. Right. But we've gone to 12, we've gone to 18. A lot of it depends mm -hmm. on your anatomy. Okay. Okay, and how you live before. Right. Right. Um, but, and, and also the type of, it's a bleeding stroke, a bleeding stroke means that's only from a blood vessel to pop, not mm -hmm. an and not an AVM, mm -hmm. right? You contain that, and there's a really good chance it's going to get better. Okay. okay. But really focusing on the post-stroke care, right. which is also very important within that comprehensive network, is we can send patients to stroke rehabilitation specialists. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're okay. very focused on getting patients moving. Mm -hmm. okay. Back to what they were doing right. and then, before, and supporting the family, right? There's, the there's, a, part. there's a big deal about that. Strokes don't happen. Stro you don't plan stroke, okay? Right. So when you don't plan stroke, the family doesn't plan stroke, and family has to adapt for that. But patients who do well have good social networks, mm -hmm. right? And it's not just family; it's friends. It's right. But our, you know, what we're working on a lot now is educating that component of the patient, okay. the family, to make sure this is what you could expect. This is where we're going, okay. and that's. We didn't know that before. Yeah. Right. Um, and we're learning a lot more from that okay. psychological aspect of stroke recovery. Yeah. So we have we have another question. This is from uh, Christina. She um, I think she saw your bio. Mm -hmm. Wants to know what is endovascular surgery. Okay. So and that there so endovascular neurosurgery or neurointerventional surgery right. or interventional neuroradiology are all the same thing. Okay. Okay. We, we, as a group, because there are different groups have gotten into, and I should say endovascular neurology. Okay. Right. As those groups have come together, we're trying to kind of take that under the umbrella of neurointerventional surgery. Mm -hmm. What we do now that we didn't do 30, 40 years ago is go within the vessel okay. to solve the problem. And so wow. most most people are familiar, of, more familiar of cardiac disease. And ant balloons opening blood vessels or taking, putting stents. Right. Okay. We grew from cardiology to endovascular disease, okay. where we can now take those metal stents that were placed in the heart and have engineered them to be much finer. Wow. So we can take stents, we can treat a lot of blood vessel diseases now mm -hmm. from within the blood vessel as opposed to without. Wow. Okay. But it's very important to realize, Christina, that if there is a endovascular option, it's not the only one, mm -hmm. right? And that's back to that comprehensive discussion. It's very important that we realize that less invasive mm -hmm. does not mean less risky, okay? And so a, even though no one, no sane person wants the mm -hmm. brain open, okay, right. it still is very important that you understand that if your brain is open and three years from now, that means you're gonna do the best, mm -hmm. that might be the best, the best thing. option, okay? okay? But endovascular, so endovascular procedures are within the vessel, endo within the blood vessel. Wow. Okay, and there's a lot of options nowadays. It's the reason that we train, it's 10 years of training, and for me, three years of that was endovascular. Yeah. Wow, so we've got another one that's coming in. Christina says thank you, by the way. You're welcome. Just wondering, um, are TIAs always a precursor to a stroke? Okay. How are they correlated? Yeah, so TIA means transient ischemic attack. Okay, mm -hmm. transient temporary ischemic, back to the right. low blood flow attack and that comes from again the cardiology heart attack right so we've got brain attacks okay okay um, and TIAs typically are a suggestion that there is a blood flow problem 
Mm -hmm. Okay, it could be a blood clot from the heart. It could mm -hmm. be a blood clot from the neck. It could be a narrow blood vessel in the brain, yeah. which is temporarily not letting blood flow go That's through, right. or has a small blockage that goes away. But a TIA means usually lasting less than three hours. Okay, mm -hmm. and that means you should probably have care. Mm -hmm. Doesn't necessarily mean uh, the hard part is. How am I going to know it's going to last three hours when you just told me I need to be at the hospital within two? Yeah. That's right? Yeah. So, and that's really a lot of counseling that we get in the hospital is, even with patients, I have to say, look, if it lasts more than a half hour, mm -hmm. you probably need to be planning on going to a facility uh -huh. to get evaluated because we can do things mm -hmm. the sooner. Time, you know, the, the catchphrase is time is brain. Yeah. We talk about yeah, that a lot. Yeah. And we know a lot, yeah, every, every, you know, couple of, minutes of ischemia means mm -hmm. years of brain development gone. Mm -hmm. So the sooner we can get and move things, and really it's a funny thing, but it, fun, it, it seems to me that more often the husband has the symptom and wants to sleep it off and the wife tells him to go. Yeah, that brings me to a good point. Don't forget, as you are, as you're watching the conversation, be sure to ask your questions in the comments field and continue to like and share. This has been a great series of questions. Keep them coming. Yeah, that I've heard that that's happened before, where the wife says, "No, you're going to go." Mm -hmm. So, what are what are those symptoms when you say you should definitely go to the hospital immediately? Yeah, be fast. Be fast. Okay. Keep, keep, and it used to be fast. Fast is the better known algorithm for understanding stroke, face, arm, speech, and then time to call. Right. Okay? But when you add B and E, the balance in eyes, mm -hmm. typically fast meant carotid disease, which is going to the front part of the brain. Those right. are the main arteries. Right. But there are two little known arteries in the back called the vertebral arteries, which are very important mm -hmm. because that circulation serves the brain stem okay. and the back of the brain. And that part of the brain is, is very crucial. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so if we add balance in eyes, we can be a little bit more sure mm -hmm. where we are. We don't miss somebody who's a little dizzy that might be having a posterior mm -hmm. circulation stroke. Okay. And that dizzy, and, and those are the ones that are the worst. So wh why are those the worst? It's, it, they serve the brainstem. Okay. okay. And the brainstem is that point where you go from the spinal cord to the brainstem before you then make your way up to the big lobes of the brain that we all know mm -hmm. about. Okay. Some people would call that the primitive brain. Okay. Whereas the more developed brain, which is why supposedly we're smarter, I don't know if we're showing that these days, but um, but that's the, the more developed part of the human brain is the more the cerebral hemispheres. Right. But the brain stem is that reflex, blink your eyes, chew, swallow, okay, breathe. Right. Okay. So a brain stem stroke is significant. Right. Okay. And so th that posterior circulation serves the brain. Okay. Here's another question that now remember, we can't answer cases about we can't answer specific questions about cases, but we can answer generally. And so this one, she's wondering, you know, my mom had a stroke while recovering from bacteria meningitis. Is her risk for a second stroke higher because of that previous? So that's a great question. Um, a lot of that meningitis-related stroke typically goes back to how it affected the blood vessels. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if the blood vessels were affected and caused narrowing. Right, then the possibility of a stroke is higher than okay. someone with narrow blood vessels or low blood flow. Okay. Okay. And so it's really important to know how those blood vessels look mm -hmm. in mom who had meningitis. So if they did it narrow, then it could be that probably same risk. Same risk she would normally yeah. have. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. So somebody said, "Hey, hey." <laughs> so uh, one of the um, questions that came in ahead of time was they were wondering um, kind of what's on the horizon in terms of emerging technologies for stroke treatment. I mean, what do you, what do you have to say about that? So the, the fastest move, early on in my training, stroke, every six months you were learning something new, okay? Mm -hmm. A lot of engineering, a lot of technology, a lot of that was geared towards the care of brain aneurysms, yeah. okay? And so in this world, aneurysms have kind of gone from mostly surgical mm -hmm. to mostly endovascular, okay? Mm -hmm. In my own opinion, probably a little too much, okay? okay. But the, because it stops people from getting that global opinion, mm -hmm. okay? But so aneurysms, I think, have stabilized more or less, even though there's certain locations where we couldn't get to mm -hmm. that we're working on getting to. Okay. And so there will be a lot more endovascular treatment of aneurysms in the future.
change. And that's where it's in the vein. That's where it's in the artery. The artery, okay. thank you. And the, and the artery itself is weakened over time. Okay. Right. The, uh, the, the really fast moving now, and really since 2015, when we got a lot of research that said we can treat stroke, acute ischemic stroke, yeah. is how do we get those clots out faster? Mm -hmm. Okay. And how do we, the clots that we can't get out, why not? Okay. All right, so those devices that are coming along and also minimizing the complications of getting a clot, we may be able to take part of it out and the rest of it showers to other parts of the brain. Wow. We can't do that, okay? So are there, are there baskets that we can pull, catch that clot with? Are there better devices to really hold on to the clot as one piece, nice. right? Wow. Those are the types of things that, we're, we're, that are really happening now and working on. Wow. It's a, so, um, a friend of yours, I think, Audra, says, Hi, Dr. Welch from the Angio team. <laughs> They're all watching. Thanks for watching, guys. And please, it looks like we have about five, ten minutes left. So get your questions in now before we run out of time. So another one um, is, what is this new treatment that people are talking about called flow diversion? So How flow, does that work? Flow diversion is probably, that, that's back to the aneurysm treatment. Right. Okay? And where, where in the early 90s we were able to go within the blood vessel, fill the aneurysm oh. with coils, mm -hmm. different types of metal to cause clot, mm -hmm. okay? We realized that you can only coil but so much and it wasn't very permanent. Mm -hmm. Even though the coiling treatments have gotten very good and they're a mainstay of, of aneurysm treatment, mm -hmm. we now understand that it's not just that little weakness in the blood vessel, it may be a segment of the blood vessel that's affected, or the aneurysm itself may be so large because we found it at a later time, mm -hmm. we now need to reconstruct that segment. So we've taken wow. um, we've taken stents that kind of look like chicken wire, mm -hmm. okay, that serve to hold the coils in the aneurysm, mm -hmm. okay, and we've now gone to stents, tubes of metal that look like stockings. All right, so that stocking doesn't stop blood flow from getting into other places, mm -hmm. but it diverts most of the flow through the stent, which then will cause clotting or and eventually scarring of the aneurysm. So that is probably the most w new way to treat aneurysms of the brain. Okay? Now those are only indicated for aneurysms over a centimeter okay. Okay, and at the front part of the brain, but as people who like to innovate in neurosurgery, yeah. we push it a little bit. Okay, mm -hmm. but Back, that's very important that people realize. I had a patient in clinic yesterday, and then they came to clinic for flow diversion. Okay. Okay. But what I have to do is say, okay, step back. I know that's the latest, greatest thing. Yeah. But do you know why that's not good for this aneurysm? Mm -hmm. So we should think about all of our options. Mm -hmm. But you have to be. You have to make sure that you ask many questions mm -hmm. and ask them twice. Okay. Right? No one ever should shy away from a second opinion. Mm -hmm. If they do. You probably shouldn't be there anyway. That, that's a good. That's a good question, actually. What when somebody comes in to your clinic? I mean, what are some good questions that they should be asking? So, it's not even asking the question. It's telling me about you. Okay. Okay. Because I want to know what ther the therapies that we have to help if mm -hmm. they're indicated. Okay. Okay. How does it best affect your life mm -hmm. and what you want to do? Okay? okay. And so, and that, and that's that helps. And when you have that conversation with the patient, it helps you kind of understand. What, what's best for that one. Okay. You can't all be the textbook patient, okay? We're all not Hugos, right? So it's, <laughs> it's dating myself, right? That's but all right, yeah, I got it. Yeah, so, I but it. Every, everybody's a different model, a different brand, right. and so you have to kind of tailor the therapy to that patient. Patients should be just like you're having, the, you're talking about it now on Facebook, right. they should be able to participate in their care mm -hmm. and make a good decision, mm -hmm. okay? Right. And it, that means ask questions, but in terms of, you know, what therapies do you offer? Mm -hmm. Why don't you offer this therapy? Is it is this something that you're accustomed to doing or is it new? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of new things in through Western Nursery. We talked about that, right? right? You're going to find certain things that so only certain people have done, all right? Mm -hmm. And most people haven't done many times, right? Okay, so it's a, it is a, it is a, in a, in a moving field like this, mm -hmm. okay? You have to ask your questions and then be comfortable. I tell all my patients, you have to be okay with me, mm -hmm. okay? You have to, and if you're not, I'll find you somebody you're more comfortable with, right. right? You have to be okay with understanding your diagnosis, right? Mm -hmm. If you understand what you're about to go through, you're gonna do it better. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the third thing is always, is your family there to support you yeah. in what you're about to go through? If we can't say yes to those three things, then we, we're not, it's not a good fit. We're not quite there. Okay. Okay. And then we, we need to sit down and talk a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or maybe you need to understand more about your disease. Right. Gotcha. And that's, that's our time. So is there anything, of, we're wrapping up, we've got a couple minutes left. Is there anything people can do, and we talked a little bit about this, to prevent a stroke? It sounds like it's a lot of, you know, stop smoking, watch your diet, exercise, right. and you don't have to go spend it. A day with Dr. Welch in that war. Right. Or the angio suite. Or the angio suite, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. So. What, is there anything else you would tell people? You know, I, I think you understand a, a big gap a lot of times in the clinic is what's your family history. Okay. All right. So understand what risk you might have been born with, right? If every family member had an aneurysm, might be a good chance to have a discussion about that, okay? Sure. Um, but, you know, but we say, I do say the same thing almost every time. The things you know you're supposed to do that you don't, okay, you probably should more mm -hmm. because we don't stay healthy to not get sick. We stay healthy so that when we get sick, we get through it, okay? And that, that's, that's the most important mm -hmm. thing to understand, and stroke is no different. Mm -hmm. A patient who was jogging on the treadmill was unfortunate enough to have a stroke, okay? Mm -hmm. If they've been jogging on the treadmill a lot, they were going to get back to jogging on the treadmill, okay? Um, uh, and, and, and on that note, probably one thing to really bring up, there's another type of stroke called, dis uh, there's another type of vessel disease called a dissection. Okay. Okay. Dis and dissection? Dissection. And that's a tearing of the blood vessel that okay. may be traumatic. It may be whooping cough. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a very, there's a lot of other reasons for separating the layers of the wall of the artery. And the reason I mention that, that is a very common reason for stroke in a young person. Okay. All right. So, and I, we talk about classic patients. So the, right. the twenty-year-old female jogger. Right. That is the textbook. Okay? okay. And that was the person who was not supposed to have a stroke. Would be the first time. Right. Okay. So, uh, know your symptoms. Know that. Understand that. Be fast algorithm. Mm -hmm. Know you have a choice about where you go. And I'm not saying come to UT Southwestern. Okay. But I'm saying make sure that you understand the facilities in your area. Mm -hmm. We're very fortunate in Dallas to have, there, there's only one advanced comprehensive structure that's here. There's mm -hmm. another one of those in Houston, so two in Texas. Okay. But there are, I think, uh, and they changed, but about eight comprehensive centers in the Metroplex. So you can get somewhere, mm -hmm. right? but you have to know where you want to go. So if you know you have stroke risk factors and, and you know you had stroke before, mm -hmm. right? you might want to have a plan. Okay. Okay. If I have a stroke, this is where I want to go. It on your phone, mm. right? EMS knows where to look. That's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Well, with that in mind, we're gonna we're wrapping up. We've got about two minutes left. Is there anything else, Doctor Doctor Welch, that you would like to, to share? Possibly do the be fast message. What does that mean again? Well, be fast is balance, eyes, face, arm, speech, mm -hmm. um, and that that's that's what you you and your family should know about taking care of family members with stroke or friends. Okay. Right. Um, another real thing is, is, is what's changed a lot in stroke and stroke, th this whole stroke wave in terms of us being able to care came from trauma, came from cardiac arrest, okay, mm -hmm. and now it strokes the thing. You know, who's played a lot of role in that is the emergency medical system, okay. right? Emergency medical services and the EMS and the ambulance and, and the, the, the folk that get you to us, right, are really learning now about stroke. And so we're doing a lot of work trying to educate EMS about stroke so that the, the patients can get to the right place. Right. right. There's a lot going on. Right. And there's a meeting in Austin right now where we're, you know, we're trying to talk about that and make sure that those things, those things develop because the stroke system of care is still in its infancy. Mm -hmm. And patients have a lot to say about how they fit into that. And mm -hmm. I would say speak up. All right. Yeah. So definitely speak up. And I am going to take one last question. One last. She says, my mom recently had a minor stroke. What are some ways she could prevent another one? Last Understand question. why you had the stroke, why she had the stroke. If it was carotid disease, if it was a narrowing in the artery. Understand if it was hypertension, diabetes. Those, understanding why you had it is the first step in trying to prevent another one, okay? But because, once you have the diagnosis, and many people don't know. They walk out of the hospital and they say, they never told me why I had my stroke. No probably told you, but didn't have you understand it, mm -hmm. all right? So call them back, understand it, and then address the risk factors. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. 
All right. Well, thank you very much for your time, Dr. Welch. Thank you to everybody who tuned in. It, the video will be live after this, so feel free to continue to share it with your friends, leave more questions. We will be back next week. We're going to continue our discussion on stroke, so tune in next week at 1.30. We'll see you then.